Spring is finally upon us in the nation's capital, and the Firebirds have a lot to celebrate now that the winter season is over. Today on Firebird Nation Sports Update, we'll visit with UDC women's basketball coach Jay Butler and his star cast of student athletes as we host the ECC champions women's basketball team. We'll recap the Firebirds men's and women's basketball seasons, as well as indoor track and field. And we'll also check in on the inaugural men's and women's lacrosse seasons and see how these first year programs are faring. All that and more coming up, so stay right there. Hello, this is Firebird Nation Sports Update, your inside look at the University of the District of Columbia Athletics. I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. Two UDC athletic teams won league championships this winter, so stick around to find out who brought home the hardware. The women's basketball team enjoyed one of its finest seasons in program history. The Firebirds won the school's first ever East Coast Conference basketball championship and earned their second NCAA Division II tournament bid in three years. Standouts Talisha Turner and Danica Brent both garnered first-team All-ECC honors at the end of the season. Along the way, Turner reached the 1,000 career points milestone, and head coach Jay Butler surpassed 150 coaching wins. The men's basketball team was decimated by injuries this season under first-year head coach Mike Riley. Junior forward Len Joe Kilo had a spectacular season nonetheless, finishing third in the East Coast Conference in scoring with 19 points per game and second in rebounding with 9.5 rebounds per game. Freshman guard Reggie Sidbury also proved he's an up-and-coming player as he finished the season ranked number one in the conference in three-point field goal percentage. The women's indoor track and field team had another phenomenal season under now two-time reigning ECC Coach of the Year Alton McKenzie. The Firebirds were able to repeat for a second straight year as ECC champions and placed an individual and a relay team in the NCAA championship meet in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The 4x400 meter relay team finished sixth in the nation with a season's best time of 3 minutes 49 seconds, which qualified it for All-American status. The Firebirds inaugural men's lacrosse campaign has been a resounding success thus far, as UDC has won three games, including two East Coast Conference victories. UDC most recently held the nation's leading individual point score to zero goals and two assists en route to an 8-7 victory on the road at Mercy on April 5th. Freshman attackman Chase Frazier is currently tied for sixth in the country with 3.17 goals per game, and junior goalkeeper Tom Yancheski is sixth in the nation in saves with 13.57. The Firebirds are currently 3-5 overall and 2-3 and in ECC play with three more games remaining on the season. That's a great start for a first year program. The inaugural women's lacrosse season is more than halfway finished as the Firebirds have played seven games thus far, including its historic first home game on March 20th versus Dowling. Junior midfielder Amber Walls leads the team with five goals and freshman goalkeeper Danny Falco has 31 saves. The Firebirds are still in search of their first win as they have four games remaining including one at home on April 27th. The men's tennis team is enjoying another solid season under head coach Dickie Mahaffey. UDC was picked to finish second in the preseason ECC coaches poll, and thus far the Firebirds are 6-4 and four overall and 2-1 and one in conference play. Top singles player senior Miguel Uzgatecki has won his last five straight singles matches and is 7-5 and five overall this season. He and fellow senior Ike Kiro have teamed up for an 8-4 record at the number one double spot as well. UDC has four regular season matches remaining in the coming weeks as it looks to gear up for another appearance in the ECC tournament. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll visit with our first guests, the entire UDC women's basketball team. We're now joined by the UDC women's basketball team, NCAA tournament participants, and ECC champions. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, first and foremost, on uh, winning the ECC championship and making it to the NCAA tournament. Thank you. That's quite an accomplishment. What I'd like to do now is if we just go around the room and introduce yourselves. 
My name is Tatiana Calhoun. I'm from Sussex, Virginia. I went to Sussex Central High School. I am a forward and I'm an architecture major. Hello, my name's Tiara Good. I'm a sophomore criminal justice major. I'm a forward from Brentwood, New York, and I went to Brentwood High School. Hello, my name is Shekana Williams. I am a junior studying in Calvin. I played a full position. I'm from Washington, D.C., and I went to Calvin Coolidge Senior High School. My name is Myla Somerville. I am a junior criminal justice major. I'm a guard. Um, I'm from Loveville, Maryland, and I went to St. Mary's Riken High School. Hi, my name is Tajruba baldwin Kalor. Um, I'm a sophomore. I major in criminal justice. I play the guard position. I'm from Newport News, Virginia, and I graduated from Debbie High. Hi, my name is Diamond E. Carr. I'm a junior. My major is criminal justice. I'm a forward. I'm from Camden, New Jersey, and I went to Medical Arts High School. Hello, my name is Chantra Oliver. I'm a sophomore criminal justice major. I'm a guard from Columbia, Maryland, and I went to River Hill High School. How you doing? My name is Tiara Shaw. Um, my major is public health. I play point guard. I'm from New York. In high school, I went to is John F. Kennedy. Hi, my name is Nika Brent. I'm a junior mechanical engineering major. I play the guard for from Chesapeake, Virginia, and I went to Booker T. Washington High School. Hello, my name is Talisha Turner. I'm a junior. My major is criminal justice. I'm a guard. I'm from Wilmington, Delaware, and went out to high school, Glasgow High School. All right, good job, everyone. You take a little bit of a deep breath now and relax, except for you three in the front. We've got to ask you a few more questions. Uh, Talisha, let's start with you. You're somewhat of a new addition to the team. You just came in this year. Um, talk about what you were thinking when you first joined the team and how you were able to get acclimated so quickly. Uh, I thought about adjusting, uh, being a nice fit to the team and winning and making it far. Did you think you'd have the, the type of year that you did individually and as a team when you first got here? I'm always a positive thinker, so yeah. Well, you did a great job leading the team and scoring 19 points per game. Uh, how did it feel to win the ECC championship at the end of the year? Good. Our coach told us that uh, he'd never beat LIU Post at their home, so to beat them and for it to be the ECC championship was good. So how confident were you and your teammates when you went into that, you know, the semifinals and then into the final game? Did you uh, know that you could do it? Yeah. Well, we beat LIU Post here before. We knew they were beatable. Uh, I trust my teammates that we can all come together and play a complete game, and that's what we did. You sure did. That, that's right. Now, again, you had a great year individually as well as the team. You averaged 19 points per game. Uh, where did you kind of pick up your basketball skills, and, and how did you get to this point thus far in your career? I uh, played summer league just, just to play for fun, and I started taking it serious when <laughs> We actually lost every game in the summer league when I was like 12, so I picked it up. So that was the turning point, huh? Yeah. Good stuff. Well, Danica, let me turn it over to you now. This was somewhat of a breakout year for you. You've had very good years before, but you got up to 15 points per game, eight rebounds per game. What was the difference this year, you know, as compared to previous years? Um, this year, I just more. I was more comfortable. I had more people around me. Talisha, 19 points a game. Tiara Shaw, she, she had a breakout year too, the best year she ever had. So I was just more comfortable. I was more able to play my game instead of feeling so obligated to lead the team. Yeah, that's great. And, and it seems like you were just more comfortable. Perhaps a lot of that has to do with the fact that you're a junior now, you're an upperclassman. Did that have anything to do with it? Yeah, that, yeah, that had, yeah it's my third year, so it had a lot to do with it. I already know. I've been in the system here at UDC for three years, so I know what Coach Brother wants and you know how the conference is. So being a junior had a lot to do with it. Now I was fortunate enough to travel with your team up to the NCAA tournament, and it seemed like you, as a group you all get along really well, almost like you're a family. Uh, talk about that, and was I perceiving it the right way? Is that accurate? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure you saw before we started filming how goofy this team is. So um, we're always joking around, always got jokes. We even get the coaches involved in it. So. Well, that's good. And obviously, uh, what you, the camaraderie that you share obviously plays itself out on the court with the success that you've had. You advanced to the NCAA tournament for the second time in three years. What was that experience like going up to the NCAAs and, and competing in, in that venue? I mean, a lot of people don't get to. Uh, had that experience, so I'm just grateful I got to go a second time. 
You know, he played up uh, at Bentley University, up outside of Boston against Stonehill. Unfortunately, we weren't able to pull out that win, but still it was a great accomplishment getting there. Nonetheless, you all are wearing your uh, NCAA championship uh, t-shirts there, so that's a great representation. Uh, Tiara, let me switch it over to you. Um, and we're gonna have your coaches on in a minute. But talk about what it's like playing for Coach Butler and, and the coaching staff that, that you all have here. Uh, it's, it's tough and it's pretty fun. Uh, being a point guard, he's, he's on me every time. Game, practice. It don't matter, he's always on me, but it's a good thing. Um, and I turned out to be a better, a, a better player. Sounds like there's a good balance of toughness and fun in there. Yeah, it is. I have to be mentally strong dealing with that luck. Now, uh, you, like I said before, you've been to two NCAA tournaments as a, as a program in the last three years, um, ECC championships this year. What you and your coaches have done here at UDC really is incredible from my standpoint. Do you all think about that and, and talk about it at all, or you just take it one day at a time and don't dwell on it? Um, we talk about it, and we also take it one day at a time, especially coming off of last year, only winning 10 games. I mean, it's a, it was good. You know, we had a good year. Uh, we did some great things. We came together as a unit. Um, and we showed, you know, other, we showed teams and we showed other coaches that, you know, last year, you know, we just didn't do well, you know. But um, this year was a great season, and I'm happy how everything turned out. Good. Now, you're the only senior out of these three up front that, I, that I'm talking to interviewing right now. So what does this experience mean to you that you've been able to have at UDC? Uh, it, means, it means a lot. Um, I'm kind of – I'm happy as my last year, but then again, I'm a miss being on the court and playing college ball. Um, Coach always told me, you know, this is your last year. You know, every game was my last game. Um, so I had to, you know, give it my all. But it was, it was at times where I had bad games. Sometimes I had good games. But um, as long as I gave it my all, I was okay. But me leaving the team is, is kind of hard because this year we had a great year. And I feel like I still want to continue to be a part of that. Yeah, there's nothing like playing collegiate athletics and the camaraderie that you get. You really can't replace that when you move on to the workplace or other things that you do in life. Right. So I'm it's great that you right. recognize that and appreciate it while you're still here. Uh, Danica, let me ask you one more question. Uh, you graduate four seniors, um, some pretty darn good ones at that. Looking ahead to next year, what do you think your team's going to be able to do next year? Something similar to this year, hopefully? Um, very similar, maybe not. If not similar, even better. Um, like you said, this is the second time in three years going to the NCAA tournament. We always get in that first round. We want to get further than that. So that's what I'm hoping to see next year, to get past that first round. So. Great. Well, I think you're going to have a lot of success. Uh, Talisha, last question for you. One thing I always talk to Coach Butler about when he's on the show is the style of play, You know how you guys press, you play great defense, transition, shoot a lot of threes as well. Do you like playing in that style? Is that something you think we're going to see next year from you guys as well? Yeah, I think it's good. It gives a, uh, a lot of players room to do what they like do best, like shows their ability to get stops and play defense. And, and show uh, their athleticism yes. and really just push the ball. So, well, you guys collectively all do a great job with it. Um, congratulations on a great year again this year certainly represented the university well, you know, throughout the season and then also today on the show. So great job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a short break and we, when we return, we'll visit with head coach of the UDC women's basketball team, Jay Butler and his two assistant coaches, Dwayne Burroughs and Robin Williams. I'd now like to welcome Firebird head women's basketball coach Jay Butler and one of his assistant coaches, Dwayne Burroughs. Coaches, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having thanks us, man. Thanks for having us, man. How you guys doing? Good. Doing Good. great. Coach Butler, you're coming off uh, a great season. You won the ECC championship, made the NCAA tournament, your second trip to the NCAAs in three years. Really seems like you got the program rocking and rolling. Uh, tell us about the season and what your thoughts are. Uh, this season was a great season for us. Uh, to come off a year, where we had a young team, we, we only won uh, 10 games the year before, and we brought in a, a great group of kids uh, led by Talisha Turner. So just to get a new group of young ladies and bring the team together, 
chemistry was key. And uh, this year, they took, the ladies took us on an amazing ride to get the ECC championship and then also make it back to the NCAA tournament. That's our goals. And uh, that was one of the goals we set at the beginning of the year. And to actually accomplish it, it was big for the, not only the program, but also for the university. Yeah, that's great. And we just had your team on. They seem like a great group of young ladies. Tell us about coaching them and, and what it's been like. Oh, got a bunch of jokesters, you know, <laughs> they comedians, uh, but they get along. And that was key. Uh, we probably would have struggled winning the championship if we wouldn't been able to pull the team together. And to embrace the Talisha Turner to come in our first year and lead the team in scoring and Danica Brent, I mean, she embraced it from day one. Uh, that pressure that we put on Danica her first, her first and second year to be that score. Now she could be that role player and she could do so many different things. She's just an unbelievable athlete. So she can score the basketball, she can rebound, she can defend, and that allowed to take the pressure off her and she can just be herself. That's great, and, and it seems like you have a great group of student athletes, and they're students, obviously. They're active in the community. They seem like a very good group of people. Talk about you know, your program and the commitment to academics and to working in the community. Uh, our number one goal is to be students first. You know, I tell the young ladies that, hey, at the end of the day, in four years, we want you to get your degree. You know, if we can win some championships along the way. But your number one goal is to get your degree so you can be successful in life. And uh, they have embraced that. Uh, the student athlete, student experience, they're enjoying themselves. They love the D.C. area. They love the school. They love going out doing community service. So we do a lot of different things just to give them a balance. And that's what Division Two is all about, just having that life balance. It seems like you're doing a great job and, and they're all moving in the right direction. Right. So obviously, congratulations on that. Now take us through the ECC tournament um, first and foremost. You played Queens in the semifinals, and then you beat Long Island University Post in the finals. Take us through that and what that was like. Uh, it was tough because when we started out, we, we ended up getting the bye. We had a tough stretch in February where we dropped a few games that we shouldn't have dropped. And it, we were in jeopardy of losing uh, our first round bye. But we ended up getting the bye, and then we had to play Queens the first round. And that first round game against Queens in D.C. was huge for us. And I just think the crowd that night, it was, it was amazing. And for the young ladies to come out and get that first win, I think that allowed us to get the momentum to go up to uh, LIU Post and win that championship. Does momentum really come into play? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I think once we got that win in D.C. against Queens, the young ladies, they were motivated to go up. And we could have been playing UConn that day up in the LIU post that and they would have won. <laughs> That's great. Now, I want to shift the focus a little bit to your assistant coaches. Uh, Robin Williams, who couldn't be here today, is one of your assistant coaches. She's a UDC alum, class of 2008. Talk about what it's like having an alum on staff and how important that is. Oh, it's great. Uh, Robin keeps me, keeps me calm. The day-to-day, -day, she takes care of everything. Uh, she played for me. She understands the system. She understands, you know, days that Coach Butler not having a good day, and she constantly motivates the young lady. And then academically, Robin was a 3.5 student here. Uh, just a great student, just a great person. So to have her on my staff is, is just a great addition. Well, it's great, and I'm a former coach. I like to make sure we give the assistant coaches their due, <laughs> so I'm glad uh, you were able to say those things. And Coach Burroughs, I want to just chat with you for a couple seconds. You, know, you coached at Bowie State, at Chesapeake, at the high school level as well. Yeah. How do those experiences compare to what you've been able to, to do here and experience here? They, they, all those positions pre prepared me to come to UDC and work with Coach Butler. And, and just whatever he asked for me to do on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm already aware of what's going on and what needs to be done. So it, it was a great big help having those stepping stones to get to this level. And what's the experience been like here? Oh, it was fantastic. Uh, our administrative and athletic department is great. They support us. You said you made the trip up to the NCAA tournament with us. You saw how silly our girls are and yeah. work with Coach Butler and Coach, Coach Williams, who've been here for a while. You know, this is just my third season here. They've been here for a while. They just helped me along and showed me the ropes of, of, of working here at UDC. You know, the two of you, Robin and yourself and, and Coach, you all seem to get along really well. It seems like you have a, a pretty good uh, rapport yeah. with one another. Does that help when you get into the coaching aspect? It, it's very helpful because sometimes we can be just as silly as the kids can. <laughs> so we get in the mix with the kids being silly with them as well. But we get along well on and off the court. You know, we have our discussions in our, in our office about different things that maybe we should try or shouldn't try. And Coach Butler is very receptive of trying some of the things that me and Coach Williams will put out there for him. 
which is great when you're working with a head coach that's willing to take the assistant coaches, you know, um, um, take what the assistant coaches may give to their advice and move forward with it. That, that's very big for us. That's great. Now, Coach, let me ask you another question. Obviously, you've had success getting to the NCAAs. You lost in the first round, which we all know is not the desired result for you. Right. So as you become a, a program, continue to be a program on the rise, how do you kind of get over that hump and go from a tournament participant to winning a couple games? What's the key to getting to that point? I just got to get a little better recruit. You know, we got to bring in some kids. Uh, I think the one thing, once you get to the NCAA level, you got to have size. And this year we were a little undersized, but we were tough. You know, we get out, up and down, we press. But when you get to that NCAA play, play you need that that tough 6'2", 6'3", post player that can uh, command the basketball inside on the post and can defend, defend the basket. So right now we're looking to get post and to make that run. Our goal right now is to win the region. And to win the region, we want to host. So we can actually host the NCAA in Washington, D.C. That's going to give us a better chance to get our first win and ultimately win the region and move on to the NCAA championship. Well, it seems to me, having watched you guys play all this past year, that you were good enough to beat any team that was in the tournament that I saw. It just so happened it didn't work out for you in that first round. So I'm sure with you know, more getting to that NCAA level more and more, you'll get there eventually. So um, you do have a great core returning. Your top two scorers are returning. Your leading rebounders are returning. What are your thoughts on next year? Uh, just want to build on the, the four top scores returning. Anytime you can return Talisha Turner, Janika Brent, uh, you got a Shakina Williams that can shoot the basketball. Uh, Tatiana Calhoun is probably one of the best rebounders in the ECC. You just want to build on it, just work hard in the postseason. And uh, I think the young ladies want to get out that first round and they're going to work extremely hard in the off season. The key is put the work in in the off season. So once we get back in, the chemistry is there. We return our top four scores. So we just want to add a couple pieces in just to put us over the top. Good stuff. Now, Coach, I want to ask you about uh, the fan support that you got this year. We had, there was an NCAA pep rally. When you went to the NCAA tournament, there was a small pep rally on campus to kind of send you off. Right. That must have been pretty cool. Talk about you know, how your team felt about that. Um, Matt, all year. I think the fans have been great all year. Uh, we had the pep rally, but just a 530 game, just the fans that come out and support. The kids, their parents would come out and watch the games, but you also had the students. Students, administration, the board of trustees came out to watch us play. So it was good for not only the, the, the young ladies on the team, but it was also good for the school. It just brought everyone together. And I just think right now, athletics and the school as a whole is, is on the rise. And I just think we got the opportunity to do something big and just, we just want to keep it going. That's great. And so now what's late springtime, summertime, what's that hold for you guys? Uh, postseason, working out and recruiting, yeah. recruiting. We're just always trying to get better. We're always trying to bring in good student athletes. What is the recruiting like in the summertime? Going to tournaments, watching games or A lot of AAU above? events, a lot of showcases, just going out, trying to identify some good student athletes that can come in and help us, you know, reach our goals, which is to win an NCAA championship. Okay, coach, last question, then I'll let you guys go. And I uh, want to talk about Will Jones, who's the, one of the legends of Washington, D.C. basketball, obviously former coach here at UDC on the men's side, won the 1982 National Championship, uh, passed away about a month ago. What are your thoughts on Coach Jones and, and his passing? Oh, it was, it was definitely a sad day. And, uh, but Coach Jones, he was a legend in D.C., probably one of the greatest basketball players, greatest coaches. And it, growing up, I remember coming up to UDC watching Coach Jones on the sideline coach. And I hear my dad talk about him all the time, how great of a basketball player he was. And me growing up in Washington, D.C., being a point guard, and to know that Will Jones was one of the greatest to come out, and I had opportunity to meet him. Uh, actually, when I was playing at Virginia Union, we played against UDC, and I had a lot of conversations with him. But just a great guy, and it's definitely going to be missed. And he's probably one of the greatest to come out of Washington, D.C. No question, no question. Well, coaches, thanks very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. And again, congratulations on a great year. Best of luck in the future as well. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. That's all the time we have today. I'd like to thank our guests, the Firebirds women's basketball team, 
head coach Jay Butler, and his assistant coach Dwayne Burrows. Please don't forget to follow Firebird Athletics on the web at udcfirebirds.com, on Twitter at UDC Firebird Fans, and on Facebook at UDC Athletics. Thanks for watching the Firebird Nation Sports Update. I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. The Firebird is rising in the nation's capital, and we're glad you're along for the ride.